We're going to fire this meeting on here. All uh, right. Uh, six o'clock, we'll call the meeting order. First order of business is the pledge to the flag. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, under the soul, and liberty and justice for all. <laughs> This is going to be a round meeting. Uh, so, yeah. I would say so, but I would so don't. Watch it. There is a second. motion on a second. Sean, any further discussion? See none. All those in favor? So, anyway, uh, members' reports. We'll start with Lindsay. Uh, I don't have anything. Nope. Uh, I've been going over using the Rev Cup. It's being used with ATVs and stuff on the weekends. We've been walking the dogs. That's and it's been great. Yes. Yep. Thank you. Uh, and nothing for me. Is a parking lot that people using the parking lot pretty decent? There's tracks in there. We used to go on Sundays fairly early, so it's depending on nobody else when we were there, but you can see the people happen in. Uh, right into the time uh, Absentee ballots are still available for your November referendum. Uh, there's nine questions on there. Uh, very confusing. So uh, if you have concerns about that, you might want to request that or come in a little early. We had three groups of kindergartners in this morning uh, from Mill Stream. They came through the office and then we took them to the bank. They're learning about community, which they do every year. Um, the Department of Labor inspection that we had back in August, I finally received the documentation of that this morning. Um, so I haven't really had a chance to get deeply into it. It's not as bad as they had implied when they were first here. There are a lot of things missing that they thought were going to be on there. So great, but I'm still going to be setting up a meeting to discuss both penalties that they had before. So um, I have accepted the resignation of our code enforcement officer, fire chief, health officer, and plumbing inspector. Uh, we're working to fill the vacancy on that as soon as possible at a meeting with fire officers today, this afternoon. Um, and so I think we'll see some forward progress in that before your next meeting, hopefully. Uh, and I've sent department committee budget requests with a December deadline out today as well. Uh, the planning board meeting was held. They did the shoreland and floodplain back last week uh, on Scouting Road. That went relatively smoothly. The community mural unveiling was held on Saturday. It was very well attended for the event that it was um, and received some good positive press. Um, and then feedback from residents. So if you haven't stopped and seen it, it's, it's really been a positive thing for us and it's, it's been all over. So great news. The activity committee is going to meet with a relatively loose agenda next week. Um, they are going to consider additional funding for the mural to get that backside. The estimated cost is $2,500 for the additional panel that would be visible from the rail trail. Uh, and then we're going to be taking uh, project programming proposals from them that we can float across the table and try to get some new fresh ideas coming through from that group of seven. So uh, looking forward to that as well. And then your PTG trunk or treat that Saturday the 28th, if weather goes well, by seven. Uh, we'll be there hopefully with the antique fire truck um, to do that for the kids. September's host fee came in from waste management. Uh, just this week, 156, 519. That is 66% increase over the same period last year. So you're talking about the increase in line as well as the increase in fee. Um, it's looking pretty good. We are already year to date, particularly September, with one more quarter to go. We're ahead of where we were in revenues last year. Your library trustees are scheduled to meet on the 26th at 3 30. Your Chewanke Owl program uh, is this Saturday at the Grange, 11 o'clock. It's going to be rainy, so a good day if you've got uh, little ones to go in there and find their curtains instead of the ones at home. Uh, that's old news there with the Parks Committee. Uh, meetings with FEMA. I had met with them before our last meeting. I've had another meeting with them. I had two more meetings on the books. The next one, excuse me, is going to for Friday, and then they'll come out for site inspections again. Those are the points of damage for the rainstorm. Then we had our local roads uh, in April 30th, May 1st, as well as the potential for mitigation efforts. So we need to sustain quite a bit of damage out on Oak Hill. Uh, and so there are opportunities with simple driveway culverts or cross culverts that they will assist us in um, upgrading if it qualifies, they would pay for 75% of those replacements. So it's an opportunity for us to get some projects done that need to be done anyway, as long as there's an upsize to demonstrate some sort of a hazard mitigation. So we're going to keep an eye on that. Uh, the fire department's going to the school on Friday to do fire safety month. They also welcomed in the kindergartners this morning um, for a quick visit there. Uh, the process of getting the full-time firefighters onto main PERS, that's the public employee retirement. 
Uh, that is still underway. I was hoping to have it uh, online for November 1st, but it just didn't happen. And I need additional information, financial information to be able to get to you folks before we can make that decision. So I put that back to December 1st at this point in time and hoping to get it to you for your November 1st meeting so we can take a first look at it. And then I've received quite a bit of public feedback. And I say quite a bit, probably a half a dozen folks um, in the last two or three weeks that um, have commented about like, Panhandle is showing up in Waterville and Scalia. And so, so, but what do we do here to be proactive against that? Um, not that you want to be proactive against people on their bad luck, but you know, it's it's a reality at this point in time. Um, so I looked into it and it looks like the existing state statute does cover us. And when I looked into it further, case law indicates that if you put on stricter regulations, we're probably going to be violating the first amendment rights. So it's strictly related to traffic that we can do that. Um, but just wanted to let folks know that we had looked into that and it looks like we'll be protected if um, we have somebody that's walking in median or whatnot and obstructing traffic. So uh, that was looked into. And then the revised schedule for the intersecting work up here at the bank and post office. That looks to be next Tuesday and Wednesday, the 24th and 25th, hopefully. Uh, and then pipe, that's a follow up from the last meeting. They are agreeing to hold the contract that was proposed at your last meeting until spring 2024 so we can evaluate the success of the crack sale. Nice. Okay. Thank you. Uh, discussion action on October 18th, general warrant number 19. That we approve general warrant number 19 in the amount of $829,613.90. Second. A motion to second. Any further discussion on that? Rudy Designs. Right signs, but he's the guy that did our gateway signage, and that oh, is yeah. for the uh, Ash Blue Park sign, the home of the Paul Pines. Okay. Uh, and if it's not that, then it's for the one of the panels down to the mural. He did the side panels for the location. What did we have uh, engineered? I see Haley Ward Engineering. Uh, they are overseeing the Father Al project okay. on the slope, but they're also handling the congressionally directed spending that two and a half million dollars. Yeah. They're navigating us through the bureaucracy of all of that, which is ridiculous. So is this going to be sort of like a the one time thing or it's going to be kind of ongoing? <clears throat> I think the cost of them administering the grant is 40000 Okay. So it's just kind of like broken up? There, it's a periodic payment. Okay. okay. Uh, North Walk Well. Uh, that was to repair one of the um, bodies on the truck, the dumb body. Oh, and it's what's normal world? Ricky Smith. Oh, Ricky. Okay, it's Ricky. Okay. Damn. What were wrong with it? Too? Yeah. I'm sure, whatever they built it was cheaper oh. than replacing it. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, anything else under discussion? This is sorry, the superior construction service is at 4,400, small in the grand scheme of all the other, of it, but that is going to be an insurance claim against the Olympia class. Somebody can uh, clean it up and get okay. replaced and finally. Okay. Uh, seeing no further discussion, all those in favor? Yes, sir. Uh, discussion action on October 18th, airport warrant number 10. Well, we approve or the warrant number 10 in the amount of six thousand five hundred ninety six dollars and twenty nine cents. Second, uh, any further discussion? Um, what's the RM equipment cutting edges? It's uh, yeah, so that repair and maintenance of equipment, and that's what they're going to use for the block for the okay. Yeah. That's We know the discussion, all those in favor? Is anybody? Uh, public comment. Mm, I just got one more thing. No, no, that's all. Sewer commitment, sorry. Oops. All right, discussion action on October 18th, sewer commitment. I move to approve sewer commitment in the amount of $23,227.25. Second. Motion and second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Is everybody? No, public comment. I just said one thing, you know, uh, I've sat through a few of these meetings and every once in a while we have discussions on how much money do you spend for the fire department. A lot of people in town may have hot burn on it, but I saw firsthand it just what type of good job they did the other day on that one on Wing Street because 
that thing was so fully enveloped when they got there. I can't believe that the neighbors that being 15 feet off have zero damage to the house and the street. I mean, so I just my hat goes off to you guys, and you know, sometimes sometimes we feel like we spend too much money, but hopefully 95% of the people don't realize don't have to have that service. But when they do, you guys do a good job. And I just I got to see it because you saved both of those buildings with really nothing. Nothing, none of ones. Oh, yeah, lucky on that. Yeah, it's, it's one of those things just public safety. You invest in the future. You probably yeah. don't need it, but right. you want to know that the guys. But I mean, we always talk about you know how much fire trucks cost and why do we have to replace all this equipment. That's what but when you see what they were able to do with it and get on top of that, and the neighbors, this, this, it, that was a tight spot to be in. Mm. I mean, <laughs> well, the meeting didn't have wind, of course, but still, yeah. the pictures that I was shown of fire coming out of every window, that's hot. Yeah. And nothing, you know, neighborhood was... Yeah, it was a big fire. Yeah. And I don't, have, have you heard anything back on that about whether they determined it to be... No. They're not going to tell us again. Okay. Yeah. Which one? So we'll see. Well, oh, it was just my hats off to you guys because everybody kind of complains about like money. Not spread not. money. Still, okay. It's there when we need it. Okay. Yeah, sure. So, and hopefully, hopefully we get it cleaned up in some type of this year's fashion. We gave them a notice to request the order to clean up within 30 days or over here before you talk to David and Andrews. Okay. Then we don't. Is that another one that's on like by a bank out of state? I believe it's all by an LLC from out of state. Oh, okay. Well, thank you. Uh, and wait a minute. Anything else? <laughs> <laughs> which, which road, Mike? Which road? That's Okay. Uh, discussion action on first policy. Okay, so literally, this is a board of three at the last meeting. Um, pretty much, they're just a bunch of grammatical and then changes from select uh, board of select to select board. But where it gets into it is, I believe, is it? Or D. Yes, it's 4D, mm -hmm. paragraph 2. Uh, at the end of that, there's a new clause that says, is that right? No. Okay, sorry, it's paragraph 1. End of paragraph 1. If it's like Lord waves a competitive group process, the decision to do so shall be made by a motion independent of the purchase authorization, and it must also include an explanation justifying the reason for waiving the same. So if you want to waive the formal process, you've got to make it in motion with a reason before you authorize moving ahead with the purchase. That's what the ask was of the last meeting. So I, I watched that because I wasn't here. Um, does it make sense to, how do I say this? Ten thousand dollars, unless the, the board selects, you know, for us not to do it. Why can't you move that to a bigger number that you have to do? No questions asked. You have to, I and mean, everything else doesn't. You can still bid, but you don't have to. What do number it? would you pick? It, that, I, that would be up to the board. I'm just saying. I, I just yeah. think we'd wind up in the same situation, yeah. the same conversations of it's not in the best interest of the town, but we have to, and then we'd get all wishy washy again. And... But if you put it, just say 20,000, mm -hmm. right, or 50,000 or 100,000, mm -hmm. at that point, it doesn't matter if you have to go up for bid. No, I mean, you can bid something off of 1,500 if you want to, but I, I feel like there should be a line. Where it doesn't matter, you it needs to go up to bid. You know what I'm saying? Because so it's tough. Like the downside of that, uh, not that they had to, but the SCBA stuff that we just did with the fire department. That's a two hundred thousand dollar award that we didn't really put up to bid. Right. Thing. And if we had something that was a hundred thousand, they would have had to have stuck that up to bid. Uh, not necessarily a, a bad thing, but it would force two other companies to just outright waste their time. I mean, they knew who they were going with before they even got into it after looking at a you know, initial price. Uh, so it's tough, right? Because no two things are exactly the same. Uh, and I, I think that the language that Kelsey and uh, Richard came up with, I think will kind of, 
add some clarity or some transparency yeah. so that everybody is really aware of why the office is not put out to bid uh, and is not so reliant on a dollar because whether it's 10,000 or 200,000, if it's in the best interest of the town to right. not bid it. But well, why couldn't you put it at 200,000? I think that that would let a lot of things. Like a lot of things are that then that means that we're not putting tons of things out. I mean, it's still taxpayer money. We can't, I mean, well, you, know, have to, well, you wouldn't. That, what I guess thousand is a lot of money to not like it. Yes, I'm, what I'm saying is you don't, you can still put it up to bid if you want. I'm I'm just saying at ten thousand dollars after that, I think you're going to find on a very regular basis being in the same boat we've been in. You say, well, you know, I don't know, and just it, if you raise it. There's so many things that you, it doesn't matter. That's the rule. $200,000. You say, yeah. I know, I know. You know what I'm saying? I know what you're saying. And I think we talked about this the last one was even in that boat, we had things that would have had to have gone up to bid that nobody bid on. And we're back at square one. We're still back in the same situation we were at if we do this and say, yeah. if we've got that, because right. some of the buildings is what we brought up the last time that nobody even bid on, yeah. or they bid so far above because they knew what the. I mean, personally, 10, 10 k might be low. I don't know, but at the end of the day, it, it doesn't take much to just have a conversation together and say, "Yep, yeah, let's move forward," or "Yep, yeah, no, we want to formally put this." Eleven thousand. I'm more about the conversation, yeah. the transparency yeah. conversation. Yes. Whether it's fifteen dollars or it's one hundred fifty thousand, I think it's a matter of us being held accountable to the taxpayers to explain why we are or are not doing something. Yes. I think the money amount, it really doesn't matter because we can either decide to do a bid for five grand or we can do a bid for 50. We still can do that. I think that this is just putting us in a spot where we do have to Which be held accountable. $10,000, you're going to have that conversation all the time. I don't I don't know that we necessarily will though because I mean like it just depends on what type of thing we're putting yeah. some things we'll get bids for some things we won't something that can be eight thousand dollars we could get a bid for but something could be 38 and we're not going to get any bids for it so we've got to do you know like we had kind of talked about having preferred vendor lists so that we can really support our local businesses like and have categories like we have three electricians we have three contractors we have three like road people and giving it to them first um and then going out the formal bid process I think it's it's not necessarily the money. It's just a matter of explaining why we are aren't doing something. And sometimes that can be as simple as we've we put up appeals to all of our local people. No one seems interested. So this is where we're at. Um, I just I feel like the rewording isn't gonna isn't really doing anything. Well, it's I totally agree because, it. because at, at our not at our last meeting, but our meeting before, some people walked away from that meeting feeling like the board said we want to put this out to the bid which was never formally decided and legitimately. And some people walked away saying, oh, the board has already picked who they're gonna go with. So there was a big yeah. misunderstanding of like where this board stood because we don't have a formal process for deciding if we do or don't do that. So this makes it really clear, okay, we are going out to bid as a board, we voted a majority to do that, or we don't have that vote. and. By our thing, it has to go up to it. Yeah. Or and if we don't have that vote, why we came to that? It's not just you know, you know, subjective to us, and we're like, and eh, we didn't feel like it, or we want. It shows us that yeah. a we're not playing any sort of level of like favoritism or giving any specific businesses or individuals any sort of you know unfair advantages to anybody else. It's basically if we're going to do something that kind of deviates from how we do things 80% of the time, we're saying why we're doing that. It could be an expediency. It could be a lack of, you know, options. It could be a whole host of things like with, you know, you brought up the fire stuff. There's lots of reasons why we would deviate from this. It's just a matter of us making sure that anyone watching this knows why we did it. It's not about the money. It's not about that. It's just letting everyone know why we're making the decisions that we're making because we represent the, you know, the 3000 people and the five of us. Yeah. That's it. Just a little bit. Yeah. Right on. I think. Uh, right. Um. Do you want a formal vote on this? Um, just to accept, accept the new language. Yes. All right. I move that we accept the new language in the on a town of Norwalk purchasing policy. Second. So the motion is second. Uh, any further discussion on that? Seeing none. All those in favor? Convince everyone. Uh, discussion action on motor vehicle inventory policy. Oh, 
Uh, yes, yeah, so this is something we've been seeing more and more in communities across the state where the audit services from the Bureau of Motor Vehicles is coming in and saying you don't have good controls on your plate, so you're stuck with your wheels. We've taken internal controls and put them into place already, uh, but they really want to see something formalized. So uh, this is pretty much a boilerplate that um, BMV has approved, and then I've just kind of custom tailored it to how we do and operate here. Um, and some other information for Board would be to adopt motor vehicle inventory policy. All right, I move that we adopt the motor vehicle inventory policy as set for us. Second. Motion and second. Uh, any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? That is everything. Uh, it's going to happen on Mercer Fire Protection Agreement. Uh, our three year agreement with the town of Mercer is expiring. Uh, I was talking with guys earlier, and we haven't always been good about this. It was just the previous agreement for this. Uh, the one we're under right now is the one that has been, and it was an after the fact thought. So I've sent this to the town of Mercer to see what their thoughts were in terms of modifications. Again, there's some small adjustments there, dates, items, and whatnot. Uh, but um, they're agreeable to continuing the fire protection agreement for another three years with the conditions that were in place before at the 17% threshold. The year to date call fare from Norwalk and Mercer. Norwalk is 18.3, Mercer is 16.3%. Yes, sir. Is our population but I said 83.7. Oh, I thought you said 18 yeah, 60. 60. 60. 60. 60. Well, it's pretty no, it's yeah, like 60 percent of those calls going. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So do we just move to adopt the Nord Walk and Con Mercer Fire Protection Agreement as stated before us? You've got it. Okay. Second. Motion a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor. And that's everyone. Uh discussion action on grant acceptance. Yeah, you don't have to take one. Oh. Uh, the first would be uh, to accept a grant in the amount of $20,000 from the New Balance Foundation to purchase adaptive playground equipment to the pool park. So, oh, nice. Nice. Wow, what are they waiting for $20,000? Like what? That seems like a lot of money. Like how It's not for playground equipment. You know, really? If you wanted to put that playground up the week down there right now, you're probably looking at six seven hundred thousand. Holy crap, isn't you? This is one. Well, our proposal is one rotating wheelchair accessible kind of an air ground mm -hmm. where it's where it's flush air to the ground, you wheel up and spin around on it. And then uh, uh, a wheelchair digger that you can get to, it will go into a sandbox and your $20,000 is lost. Wow, that's still excellent. Yep. Uh, there's a motion second. Uh, anything other on discussion? Is there a sound that right for us on? No. All right, so that's just wow. Wow. Excellent. Wow. Okay. Uh, all those in favor? That's everybody. Thank you, Dallas. Yes, the next grant I have to accept is a grant for $2,270 from the Maine Municipal Association of Risk Management Services for the purchase and installation of surveillance equipment in Usula Park. We've already moved ahead on this. There was an application pending. I'm waiting to hear from them, but we weren't successful with that grant, and we expedited the installation naturally because of circumstances. But uh, if we could move to accept that, and I can iron out the administration with all of that, that will put that to. 2200 back into the tip. We had already kind of appropriated funds to do that anyways, right? Was that ARPA funds that we initially kind of docked it for? It was tip. Okay. Yep. All right. All right. So as uh, I move that we accept that $2,200. Second. Second. Uh, any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Is everybody? Okay, so this is still just related to this discussion. Um, this has been in your pack before I emailed it out. The discussion is really surrounding traffic control downtown and safety for pedestrians and vehicles. Um, so I don't know if you have things that you like that you've seen in this, things that you've heard about outside of this or things that you hate in this so that we can try to revise what we have uh, and make it a more effective tool for our evolving downtown. The only thing that I have any sort of like concern of is for obviously safety things when people are parking going in the wrong direction but my biggest worry is 
the enforcement of it. How are we going to, you know, that's I think going to be the big, I mean, I guess signage would be one thing of good appropriated funds to make sure we get signage indicating like the amount of time you can spend in a, in a spot like that you need to be. If traffic goes this way, you need to park with it, not come nose in. Um, but no, I, I think it definitely needs to be addressed, like, especially as it starts getting busier, this trailer is more like ATV traffic. We, we have to address it. I just am a little concerned over who's going to make <laughs> Maybe they'll do it what they're supposed to do. I have the same question. When this one said that it was municipal officers, and if you're in Mercer, that, that's us. I that's you know. here, too. Yeah. Uh, so so we would, would be out there. there. I can get tickets. Well, you can, well <laughs> in the town of Castine, the town of Castine has reserved that ability for each selectman. I don't the full employee, the sheriff's office. Do they get a badge and everything? No. <laughs> I mean, it might be too cocky, I mean. The thing is with that, you get a school that there's kids parking all over the place. The school? That's me? Oh, right, 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 right. But they've gone through in all of their, um, but they also gave their authority to the police officers or the safety officers at the school. Right, but they go through half of their document is street by street, no parking. So the water. <laughs> right, so I just kind of skip through the street by street. No Are we just parking. talking about Main Street? Yeah, okay. essentially. Yeah, I mean, unless you see that it's another problematic area. I don't. I don't. To be honest, I don't spend a ton of time downtown, so I don't know that. Well, but no, I don't think it's just Main Street. Yeah, there are any people who need to get in community service hours might want to. Come in on this one and like patrol and do that kind of stuff. Be like part time meeting. I'm just wondering if there's any sort of like volunteer like thing of this where it could be like someone needs something to put on college applications that they're helping out with the town and stuff like that. I, I don't know. Right. So you can do that, and if you designate a municipal employee, then that would cover somebody like that, right? Mm -hmm. But in in not overreach, but you know, you've got a public works employee that's downtown doing snow removal. Well, what recourse do we have? Mm -hmm. And at two o'clock in the morning, I'm sorry, I'm not coming up. Yeah. Flap something on somebody's windshield and call for a hook. The public works employee should be able to do that. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. And then the unique thing about this was that they say you pay within 30 days or you appeal within 30 days, or you're going to a collection agency and you're going to be charged a service charge for that collection agency. That saves us from anything else. And hmm. not that you want to get that way. You obviously don't want to go overreaching, but if if you're downtown enough, as Paul works is, you, you tend to know who the people yeah. are parking on the track or the parking on the other yeah. way. Or, Gives or enough of a bite and a discourage, right. but not so much that it could really like cripple anybody, I guess. Right. right. Yeah. Right. I mean, I'm just curious about like what we're actually looking to. I, it's also hard for me to envision, like, how different is it going to look? Okay. So any different? Okay. No, really, no, right? Just everybody should be parked in the same direction on the right side of the road. How do you like enforce that? Well, that's state law. Okay. Right? But if they're not, and you pass an ordinance, and theoretically they could get hooked out of there. Okay. If two or one comes by and they see it, yeah, and it's mm -hmm. what it is, take a picture and hook them. So we monitor the staff. The there was like brief conversation. I feel like of like how long you could park. So we have that in certain municipal lots right now, yeah. two hour limits. Yeah. Those two hour limits are not enforceable. Mm -hmm. So that would be something that would be incorporated into this if that's what you want. They're not enforceable right now because we don't have an ordinance. Right. Okay. It's just been a, we didn't want to do an ordinance kind of, mm -hmm. but let's put the signs to support business and customers coming in. So that was a little more tough thing for you. I agree that I'm right. Excuse me. I get an off topic ask about traffic. By Dunkin' Donuts coming downhill, that is getting ridiculous. Is. is there any way we can put the white line between the skip line to go to the left? Yeah, to the right. And then one go go straight. I do it if they will let people in front of me allow. I don't think it's so, enough to uh, offer it. Well, there is. Why there is. After one time, I'm talking to you. I'm going to do that. Or GOT and the Reborn. Is that something we could do? Like, state state state. State. we can make the state aware, but we can't make the state aware. Explain to me what you're looking for. Yeah, you're in like thing lane, you're already down the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. But it's a lot, right? Do you want to do the fire? Should come down the hill. Isn't that like obvious though? You're just stopping your turn. Uh, oh, so two, over too far because the flow of traffic is uh, turning. Uh, anybody there are two? 
The reason there is Oh, okay. You but, want to. Yeah. You want to. I don't know. That makes it even more messy. I feel like it's already. No, well, no, we'll just keep some. Show. What happens is you have one person off from town and doesn't realize what's going on. Yeah. And they sit right in the middle. Mm -hmm. And in yeah. the mornings when I go to school with the kids, if they're off, I do I go around them and I can just go. The traffic light. So, like when you're at the light, like across from the bank, if I'm coming from Arnold, I can scoot home because there's enough room there. And there's almost yeah. always enough room there. But, but like, it's not necessarily marked, but like, you know, if you're going, yeah. keeping up, heading towards Farmington, you can go straight, but you can also usually scoot in around. It's just a matter of making it aware for people to know, like, Two hey, stay five. towards the middle. But if you had a line here, at least people stay to the middle of the yeah. road. So just people behind you can go around. We're at the shop, but uh, the state yeah. keeps sending a traffic sign. Not a. Well, I'm telling you, yeah. If you have I don't want traffic lights here. Oh, I don't want them. No, no. Man, please don't put a traffic light in there. That would make it worse. I just I want to take a line. You know, if you made a line 50 feet up there, it would make things go so much faster. I totally agree. Um, and another thing is put signs coming from like here. That way, use your blinker because people, they have. Horrible. Oh, they, they have the right way to cross that lane, mm -hmm. but they, they don't do. use your their blinker or or turn put a blinker right even though you're going straight mm -hmm. just so people can go go straight right and you're not supposed to use a blinker to go to skyline you're supposed to use a blinker to go to nothing other right yeah right. 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 it goes straight it's just messy yeah. so do you want to open the can of worms with the dot and risk putting a fixed track like <laughs> i don't want to like i want to back it's a lot of Yeah. You can't <laughs> block with them about striking the intersection, trying to get a skip line around there to yeah. create some more definition. They said that they would do it. They haven't done it. I've asked you probably two or three more times. So they're doing that. They should so put some in the pothole. That rough. Yeah. Yes. It's going to get better when you deal with your budget for you. No, I'm just trying to compile what you like or what you call like. And then I'll work on pulling something else together based on what we already have because we have like snow removal stuff. Will our say municipal officers and we will define right. municipal officers as people like public works and stuff like that? Okay. Well, yeah. Municipal officers are you, municipal officials is everybody else. Okay, you can say municipal officials. Yeah, we, we need to write it. As well as what are we going to be uh, for our parking lots, if you will? Are we going to designate one of our town parking lots to where we want, like the BIW guys parking? Because that I mean, conflicts with our two hour limits, but I don't, I mean, I want them in our larger parking lots because I don't want them on the side of the road or east side of the restaurant. So we're in a, we're in a conundrum, for lack of a better word, because we, you've got this real estate on Main Street where people own buildings but they don't own any parking. So the people just feel as though they can park wherever they want, in which case, I've got a high value. Commercial parking for people that are coming and going that are spending two minutes or 20 minutes, right? Or maybe two hours. Generous. Depends on Thursday I mean. Right. But then you've got people that just park there constantly. Yes. And so they really should be, and employees of those businesses should be removing themselves from a village area as far as they possibly can within reason. Right. So that's customarily on Wall Street. The problem that we've had in mind, we've seen less and less. Well, a lot of people are going to the grange until that got blocked off. But yeah. Uh, it's security. People are losing catalytic converters. So you'll see vehicles here at the bank from time to time. Uh, I heard Usula was charging. I'd probably, if it were me, I'd go to the lower lot of the school by the library and take that last row in there. So, yeah. That's already That's a cluster. Of like, no parking. Like, park. I have to park on the road to pick my kid up every day. It's, it's absurd. But that's only a pickup and drop off. Yeah. And if these were just six trucks that allowed people to get to good paying jobs at the ironworks. And they were just there during drop off and pick up. So they're already where they're going, right? I don't know. But we don't have, you know, this parking's been there. We don't have that for that long part of kind of parking, but because we're a crossroads, it's the issue. Has there any ever been an conversation about getting more parking areas? Yes, but the issue's been real estate, right? Mm -hmm. So it's real estate, right? Mm -hmm. So you have them. No, no, and I see somebody's well, I don't know who's uh, across from Cummings there, but that is privately owned, right? That's right. We can even park it with somebody else's land. I mean, it's a great like enterprise for someone who owns that land or like who owns where they've got it, like charge people a permit thing, but like just because you want to park in a Norwalk spot doesn't mean you 
get to. Cool. Make that your, it's not a park and ride. It's, mm -hmm. I mean, they're totally keep it up. Right. Cool. Back of Usula, the store. Who owns that area out there? The store. Who owns all the way back? Do they want all the way back in those rooms at all? Yes, it is all in the other rooms. So, but as a business to get the BIW guys in, they provide the parking to get them into the store. But they charge. They would have wanted for big charge people. Gotcha. I'm just wondering if that was something we could talk to them about. Right. Right. I know a lot of it's been usually the big trucks, and I wonder if that's why they charge because it's the big rigs that usually park up there. I just, I, and this is, we're getting off topic, but I think we're doing a lot of great stuff to get more people to come to our town, but well, yeah, they're not going to keep coming back if they can't actually get to where they want to go, you know? Yeah. yeah. It's like I went to Park House and the line was ridiculous. I'm like, oh, welcome back. Yeah. You got it great. So, you know, it's kind of like we might start running into that and then. And could you have a conversation with us to see what they're. Plan is if they are charging, if they're open to an official park and ride back there, so that we could maybe get the state to maintain it for them. Yeah, yeah, I just anything, whether we can help, the state can help something, because I mean, it is, you were six or seven basis. Base I, mean, I mean, like, very good. that's probably the most convenient spot you've got. Yes, and I, I think they have cameras. So I think we're still looking at the back there. Right? Yeah. Well, it's possible they're both trailers. I mean, like, is it that big of a deal? Like, Park down there. <laughs> yeah, that's what they issue with Winter. And by security. Like, oh, this camera's going in. We just signed for a grant. Well, <laughs> right. Why can't people park at the Grange anymore? The Grange is a private organization. There yeah. again, the board could have asked them if they're willing or open to space either. Like, it's it something. No. Well, and I, I think the issue there is. Uh, like it's already got potholes and like them. I mean, there's no one's going to pay to repair any of the stuff that's there from like wear and tear. People coming in and out, and like it becomes a cross through for people coming. I think that for them, it's just it's not that big. It needs to not be like a U turn turn around for people. Like that's not. Yeah. I mean, I think it was worth a conversation because that's pretty bad. Yeah. Your store. I mean, you're in a bind. What do you think? If they if they don't have security at Missoula, could we offer to put up a camera floor? Right? Right. We even have cameras that we don't have big cameras. Yeah. Yeah. We have now, so it's not a camera yeah. issue, right? Like no, we have cameras on the street now. We have cameras all over the street. You can't yeah. see. But it's not. I mean, like again, we're not designated. We have a park and ride. It's not the town's responsibility to do that. Like no, give you no, a place right, to park. Right. It's just. Uh, it's a nice to have, but it's certainly not something we're required to facilitate. Yeah, more of the cost because it is. It's probably maybe seventy vehicles that we've got yeah. currently parking downtown. Yeah, but who? Uh, my, my only question to you would be on that is: Do you see a lot of people that are frequenting the businesses downtown parking at the one on that that particular parking lot and walking down to them? I see the only vehicles there are the ones that are long-term parking the right. DIW. So I don't think it. From what I've seen, and I've been down there a little bit this, this year here working down there, you don't see a lot of foot traffic coming in and out of that parking lot. You just see your BIW yeah. seven or eight. Right. Well, and there's nobody else. There was a lady who asked me when I was working there if this was the long-term public parking because she she was going to somebody was picking her up there going to sugar. Could I leave it there for more than two hours? Like, as far as I know, you know, but, but but you don't see it's not like they're going to the job, they're not going down to Yorks, they're not going up to the same shop up above, so I don't. It's and just a handful of vehicles mm -hmm. that are doing it, and it's not. I don't think it's going to make a difference in what you guys are. The parking well, situation, I mean, well, we're kind of talking about you know, the future, right? Well, because well, yeah. also, if we pass an ordinance that makes it so you can park more than two hours on Main Street, the inhabitants that rent and live on the lower section of Main Street are not going to be able to park out in front of their buildings, so they're going to need to go somewhere. So there's literally another five or six cars that aren't right. going to be able to park. Throw in some businesses that park in areas that you necessarily don't want them. So there's seven or eight, even if you empty out that upper parking lot, the seven or eight that you want to get off Main Street to open up parking for businesses would have to go right there, right. Right? within walking distance of their halls. Uh, so it's, I, don't, I don't think we have a fix all, but I know it would be nice to get like the no. rental parking off of 
Main Street and they need somewhere to go. I see where you're going with it. I didn't understand it. I understand it now better. You right. Can you, that. Okay. Don't forget what we're doing on our sidewalks in right. here too. So that will have an impact on your folders and things like that. So you could say, okay, I'm gonna offer it. Once you get on Depot Street, this side of it, you can be able to park on one side of the road and stripe it up like that. And then you've got to hold it up to go. Like on Depot Street parking, you don't need to on your side of the road parking. Not to be out of touch, but you spend enough time in the city and you realize that when you buy a piece of real estate, well, parking, you have a lower value. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's not like the city boss is going to come in and say, oh, well, I'm sorry, you want to buy a piece of property, no parking, let us create parking for you. No, that's like $150,000, $200,000 parking spot. So I think in reality, we have to be honest about understanding, but also about, you know, people's investments and what our role is in creating a solution for them. And we, we town officials should be about the community as a whole instead of a limited few. And that's a difficult bridge to cross, but mm -hmm. it's the reality of it. Because Pete Towns, you definitely are running on a park in downtown currently, right. maybe without any. And there's new business. Right. Okay. Right. But we that's where right. right. like, okay, things are have to, I feel like with people, are problem, with this. people are like going to get to know the jug and then they're going to come in the off season and they're not on their shovel wheels. And I mean, the the they're they're right. Right. There's on the trail, only half it's open and not even the half, but really like mm -hmm. goes back up. It's it's already happening and that's so brand new. We have no way to fully sort of grasp what the impact is going to be a year from now, a year and a half, from two years. So I think that we have to get these things in place now so that eight months, I think, is going to be a yeah. lot more. But it's, like it's, you came to the unveiling the other day on that back ramp. Right? Mm -hmm. That's like in the perfect world. That's where all of those vehicles coming and going will stay down in that back 40 to leave that space open in the street for more vehicles. Yeah. Because it's easy. We've got to off just more than us. So you're going to have all these snowmobiles coming in or side by sides or whatever. We, we still want place for people yeah. to stop. Yeah. So there's a lot of traffic that goes down Main Street. It doesn't stop. There's I've heard the reviews on that ramp have been, the access to that have been part, very positive. So yeah, it's, I mean, it was. I was freighted. We actually had like the spray tanks and it was full because I was rushing in the back of the side by side. So like, I was already heavy tippy everything. And like, I looked at it first, I was like, ooh, that's kind of a, but it was great getting down there. It was a great ride going over. And well, people have used it coming into Main Street. They say that's a game to do. Yeah, you know, right on. So you just give that some more thought. Nothing we start to pull a document together that we could and add or pull out or change. Can it include a map? Yes. Yes. Bad idea. Yeah. Yeah. Visual. I need them. <laughs> like where the park. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Perfect. Sorry. Okay. Uh, moving forward. Uh, other business. I could get a motion to add discussion action on the whole permit to the agenda, please. So moved. Second. Motion to second. Any further discussion? Same. Not in all in favor. So everybody. Uh, this is for three poles uh, that are in the intersection of Waterloo Road and Borough Hill Road. Is this a new property or is it just like? It is all new place. Okay. I hope that we approve the town pole permit for the NP general. I will create 60960. All right. Motion to second. Any further discussion? Can we get it added to the agenda? Yes. Do it. Um, okay. We did. <laughs> okay. A motion to oh. add full permit to the agenda. Yeah. 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 I don't think yeah. we voted. Lose one. Okay. Anyway, we've added it. I think he said uh, any discussion, right. and then we jumped into the, the poll. Okay. Okay. All right. So great. We added to the agenda. Now there was a motion and a second to approve it. Yes. All those in favor. Thank you. Do we just approve the polls in? Okay. All right. Anything else from the other business? Yes. If I could get uh, uh, discussion action on equipment confirmation to the agenda. So moved. Second. I'm looking a second. We have further discussion. I'm in favor. Uh, I would ask that you confirm my appointment of Todd Pineal as the interim fire chief beginning November 1st, 2023, with an indefinite term. He agreed to that. An interim fire chief. So moved. Man, <laughs> <Any further, laughs> <further discussion? laughs> uh, seeing none, all those in favor, and that's everybody. Nice. That was good. Uh, anything else? Me. Uh, if, uh, if I want to 
Steve, uh, I would like you to move ahead with the building for the town out of the park and ride. Okay. So we need an official motion and then another motion to have you go see vendors. Or do we want a motion to not put it out to bid? Okay. We're going to make a motion to add consideration of the trail maintenance building to the agenda. So moved. Second. Motion to second. Any further discussion? Say none. All those in favor? It's everybody. Okay. And then now, however you want to move ahead, it's, uh, if you're going to move away from the formal bid process, we need to make a motion to move away from that formal bid process. And why? So I think that we move to um, contact local uh, contractors to gauge pricing and interest in building and building. And, building. and that's our reason and the motion. No, that's not a very good reason. I would love. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't feel like we're ready to move past the bit. What I would love is like just a paper that shows like at this point in time, what we're actually planning on building, what information you have already. Like, I, I don't know if you've gotten some quotes already, but some ideas, the piece about the concrete, like that proposal, just so we can like see it and say, cool, like this sounds good. Or I'd also love to see like, and I know we talked about this before, but like, average costs of things like that right now I know that's difficult given the market but like for me that would be a helpful page of just like making an informed decision so I don't feel like I need you to go do anything that like you have some information already and I just or you can share it all right now if you feel like so to do that, when the but... association submitted the proposal mm -hmm. regarding the building they had well I've got budgetary estimates for the project yep at a contingency and came up with that 1375. So in my mind, that should be what it should cost us at most to do that. And that factored in concrete work, paying for concrete mm -hmm. work, surveillance, the building itself, utility. Um, it may not have considered, and I don't think that it did, but it may not have considered the exterior lighting, as I'm calling it, where you want four commercial posts or lamps in that park lot to cast out. Or security in the in the library department. Their proposal that included. I couldn't speak to it right off hand, but I wouldn't imagine that it was. So is that, is that material cost, or is that include some sort of lien? It was all together. It was all. Yeah. Well, and I and I could be wrong, too, but I thought that initially it was that was looking at a metal building, but since that initial proposal coming through, there were some things that came to light, like the manufacture of those buildings. There was some kind of things that came up about some issues with those buildings, and also like costs that they didn't fully understand that of the installation of it, or even I think finding someone who could install a metal building. So that's why another contractor was coming out to look at to see about like stick build if that was going to be more cost effective. So so it's my understanding that the initial thing was to, to try to get that steel building. Yeah. And that it could be quick, if you will. Um and then you would just get somebody to assemble it. Mm -hmm. Then the thought was okay, maybe this cost savings with a pretty equitable building structure if you want to stick build. And then that business could be kept right local, where you give somebody to start to finish business. And I think that's why the pivot happened that way, mm -hmm. especially from the Sportsman's Association perspective. Yeah. Um, and then I know that there were talks about tweaks of maybe needed to move 10 feet on the dimension of the mm -hmm. building. And so that left a wider open door. Yeah. My only concern with it, getting everything and putting it back out is it's going to significantly like impact the timeline of this happening. Like I know that you know, right now, like the second half of the trail is open, but that's going to be open fairly soon. That means like the snowmobile stuff is going to be there. So the ability to house the equipment and operate from that location, I think is becoming more important now that it's really like a reality. So I think that, you know, for me, if we were going to vote to say like some sort of a reason with something, I would say the expediency of getting this up, exploring what options we have to do it as, you know, cost effective and time effective as we can so that we can we're not waiting two years because we had to have an engineer do it now it's three hundred thousand instead of the hundred and fifty I yeah, I think it won't get down this year. No, I think no, no. I, 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 I think I think we should just want time to waive the bid process due to the fact that we want to make sure this building is ready for the upcoming season and because it's TIF funds that we already have a set amount to spend. Speaking of construction and 
And we didn't, I don't know if we necessarily reached out because we had, had there were conversations about setting up preferred vendor lists. And I think that there are some contractors in the area that are local that weren't even given the opportunity to be like, hey, yeah, I can do this for this or that. So I think that, you know, exploring that area to see if someone else can do it. And then once we have two or three people that are local to say like, yes, we can do this in this time frame. Yes, we can do it for this amount of money. Then we bring it back to the board and then we make the best decision from there. So it, it's kind of, it is a, a bid, so to speak, because we're getting multiple, but we're kind of trying to keep it in Nordwalk businesses first. And if we cannot meet our needs with that, then we can do something more formal. Are you seconding your motion? Yes. Yeah. So waive the formal process because due to expediency and construction and no funding availability. Mm -hmm. Okay. I was just no. adding on to our reason why. So people at home knew what we were up to. Like, no, no okay. wait, my, wait. Uh, so you, you, right, any discussion on that? Okay, all those in favor. Okay, so that's everybody. So your formal process is now been waived. Now it would be, do you want three bids? Is that what you were saying? Of course. I think reaching out to, I, I think that we, have three different businesses that we know that potentially could do the work, are capable of doing the work, just need to actually be made aware of what specific work is being requested and the timeline that we're hoping to get it done at and like the cost of it. Yeah. So, um, and we could come up with those three and be like, yeah, no one can do anything or it's not even close. So it is. And then we've got to come back to the drawing board. But I think then at least we can try to get it done locally and for, you know, quick. <laughs> so, would Tag said, I would. And Scott Vegan into the local thing. I don't think you're going to have enough people in order to do it. I, so certainly, my yeah. yeah. All right. Go I think tentatively, we'll be able to do it. Mike McDonald, you're going to be three yeah. local that will yeah. uh, give us competitive price. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can after we give after we offer it to local tax paying businesses, then we can branch out to like the next towns and stuff like that. But I mean, I'll always say as long as it's like makes good financial sense for the town, it never doesn't benefit us to give business back to our local businesses. I, I think always that's what we should be trying to do. Okay, so we made a lot of changes to purchase and health and everything else. <laughs> How about this? A minimum of three businesses will be sought out to provide cost estimates on proposal. Yeah. And I will hold one, two, or three free bid meetings, ideally one. Mm -hmm. Where these people can come at a date and a time, and I can post on the website under our RFP and say, yep. "Meet us here." And if anything else comes up, come. Are you gonna reach out to people? Well? Uh, yeah. If you've got if yeah. you've got a name for me, yeah. I will reach out to them. Well, and I think the two moving. I've got three or four on my yeah. desk right now. Yeah. Because people have reached out to me since we've had these conversations. Out there. Yes, and I think that us moving forward, having that preferred vendor list for the town, you know, that's something that can always be changing, and evolving. It's something that will allow businesses. You know, say you're still a business that all of a sudden, you know. It's typically like forestry stuff and like stump grinding, but all of a sudden you buy a new piece of equipment and now you're doing some something else. You can let the town know, be like, hey, I want to be part of this because, you know, I just hired a guy who happens to also be a master electrician. So we're doing, you know, electrical work now. Add me into that pot of like, not just these things. Now we're doing this. So I think it gives businesses an opportunity to make themselves known and available. It gives us the opportunity to just sort of, you know, vet companies to make sure like, do you have the appropriate insurances that we need and stuff like that? And that way we've got kind of like a quick, you know, quick and dirty way of being like, hey, these are our three. Like, can you guys do this? I think we'll expedite a lot of, you know, the red tape that we have with doing things out that way. And maybe it backfires, but I think that it's a it's a good starting point for us to stay within a bid thing, but it gives us the, you know, the lateral ability to kind of do things a little bit quicker and more local and sort of. It's not cutting corners, but maybe cutting time down. It's like the thing that keeping it local, those people from the issues we discussed at the last meeting, like with other buildings that have gone up, that if they're reputable, they're not going to want negative publicity in the town. Yeah. They're doing business. And with our like, preferred list, if something like that happened and they weren't, you know, helpful in mitigating those issues, right. guess what? You're not on our preferred list anymore. <laughs> like, yeah, sorry, is, like, right. you weren't super to deal with, so... Okay, yeah. so what I'm going to do is I'm going to draft an application for a business to become a preferred vendor. Mm -hmm. If we are aware of them already, we will get them to. You know, probably. Them. Okay, yep. Uh, and ask for the name reference to I'll see what other folks are doing in terms of that. And then we can build that list. And then you, it would be a process of onboarding mm -hmm. as a yep. preferred vendor. 
Okay. But now I need a motion is what I really need to wrap up the item before, which is I'll form it for you. To authorize me to proceed with with holding pre bid conference with a minimum of three businesses to see cost estimate sign proposal for the construction of the trim lane zone. So moved. Okay. Motion to second. Uh, any further discussion on that? Seeing none, all in favor? Nice. Okay. Made that easy. Uh, Can we? Yeah, <laughs> I like to work after the ball. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yeah. I think that's right. Clean up your bus stuff, really. Uh, okay. So, yeah, good. This is, uh, we don't have anything else for other business. What's the PSA if you put balloons on a stop sign to take them down when the party's over? Oh, yeah, right? Yeah, it is like the lawn sale sign. No one's going to hear me say know. that, but I have to say that loud. Yeah. You're going to kill animals if you don't do that. It won't be a killer. Don't kill the lawn. Okay. I cut them all up. Very since I'm in my car now. Good night. <laughs> okay. Uh, moving forward, uh, executive session uh, pursuant to 1 MSRA 405, the town maker's performance. I move that we go into executive session. Second. Motion to second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Is everybody? You got it. Have a good night, Peter. <laughs> I'm, I'm
move everybody back. And right, uh, moving forward, is an action on town manager performance. I move that we approve the 2% performance increase for the town manager. Yeah. Okay, well, second, any further discussion on that? Say none, all those in favor, and that's it. And then just the last few there. I move that we supposing in a second to end. Uh, any further discussions? None. All in favor? I am sorry. 